CentOS Linux 7 is riding off into the sunset on June 30th, 2024. If you're a systems administrator, you've got to be asking yourself, how is this going to impact my day-to-day -day work? I'm Eric, the IT Guy Hendricks, an operations advocate here at Red Hat. That's a self-proclaimed title, but I see my job as drawing on my years of experience as a systems administrator, engaging in the community with folks just like you, and taking that information back to our engineering teams. I ask them, what features are they working on? What's coming up next in Red Hat Enterprise Linux? And asking, how can these new features help solve problems that systems administrators face every single day? As a former IT guy, as a former operations guy, I've worked on numerous distributions of Linux, including RHEL and CentOS Linux. So when I'm asked what'll change, the crux of the question usually is, what new processes, what new commands, what muscle memory do I have to retrain? Thankfully, my response is, not much. The most obvious difference is the existence of a subscription in Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Obviously, CentOS Linux is a community-supported distribution, so it doesn't really have the concept of registering for support. Red Hat Enterprise Linux, on the other hand, has an entire suite of tools and hundreds of engineers, and hundreds, if not thousands, of support personnel from consultants to support engineers that you could call on the phone. But that doesn't mean that subscribing Red Hat Enterprise Linux has to be difficult. We've been adding a ton of tools to make that process quicker and easier than ever. The first of those tools is Simple Content Access, or SCA. SCA is a streamlined process for pairing RHEL systems with their appropriate subscriptions and ultimately getting them access to the needed software repositories. Now, if in the past year or two you've come to Red Hat as a new partner or a customer, this is probably enabled out of the box, but it doesn't hurt to check. To do so, we'll need a web browser. Head on over to access.redhat.com and log in with your customer portal account. Once you get logged in, click on subscriptions in the top left corner. You'll see a banner across the main body of the page marked as Simple Content Access. Make sure that that slider is marked to Enabled, and boom, just like that, you don't have to work with assigning system purpose, or managing support levels, or manually adding RHEL systems to their base repositories. Simple Content Access does all that for you. The next step is to create an activation key. This key creates a layer of abstraction between your customer account and your Red Hat Enterprise Linux systems. First of all, you won't need to enter your customer portal account and password into every single server. Instead, you'll just need an organization ID and this activation key that we'll create in a second. Second of all, you can assign certain subscriptions to certain activation keys. For instance, if you have a series of satellite servers, a satellite capsule servers, you can create an activation key specific to those servers that automatically enable the satellite repositories and the satellite subscriptions to those hosts. So it really makes it easy to have production level, development level, and different products already set up based on activation key. Since we are already logged into our customer portal account, let's go ahead and click on Manage Activation Keys. We have an informational banner here that lets us know that soon activation keys will be permanently moved into the hybrid cloud console at console.redhat.com. But for now, let's go ahead and stay in the customer portal. For today's example, I want to keep this easy, I want to keep it straightforward so you can get to work with your Red Hat Enterprise Linux systems quicker and easier. Click on New, then give your key a logical name, something that you'll remember. Set your service level, that impacts your response SLAs on tickets, and ensure that auto-attach is enabled. In the table below, you'll see all of the subscriptions your organization has available. In this example, for instance, this is just a test user of mine that only has access to the Red Hat developer subscription for individuals. So depending on your subscriptions, your table will look a bit different than mine. But go ahead, select the appropriate subscription, and click Create. Now, when we go to register a system, we just need the organization ID and the activation key that we just created. The best part is we can use this as part of our system builds, as part of registration for, say, a convert to rel client, or because it's just a key pair, we can also use this in automation using something like Ansible Automation Platform. Really makes registering your systems quick and easy. When I was a CentOS Linux administrator, I didn't always have a support contract with a company like Red Hat. Most of the time, in fact, I was the support line. In other words, if I had a problem, it was me going out and doing the digging. It was me looking through man pages. It was me scouring the internet to try and find the piece of information that will help me understand what the error is. And don't forget, all of those hours spent on Stack Exchange, reading through several year old threads populated with complaints about the lack of a particular detail or formatting, 
then if you did find a solution, usually it didn't work or it wasn't applicable to your environment. See, that's the hidden cost of running free Linux. You are the cost. Your time, your energy, your patience. You spend all that time supporting systems, whether it's on the clock or whether you're on call at 2 a.m. on a Saturday morning fixing a system that only two people need access to. Whew, yeah, that is, that is the cost of running free Linux. Let's face it, Red Hat and Red Hat Enterprise Linux carved out their place in the industry for one thing, originally support. Red Hat was one of the first companies to take Linux and provide a phone number that you could call to help fix those issues. Over 20 years later, Red Hat still prides itself on an award-winning support team and consultants that can come in and do engagements with you, help you work through major issues or, or major uh, changes to your infrastructure like in-place upgrades or conversions. All you have to do is create a ticket, upload your logs, and you'll be provided with around-the-globe support with teams that will help you solve that outage or fix that glitch before it costs your company thousands and thousands of dollars in lost revenue. So what's the benefit for you, my fellow sysadmin? <laughs> it is your time spent scouring the internet for answers. Instead, you can put that to good use, learning a new skill, automating a mundane task, or even taking that vacation time you've been putting off. So remember the customer portal tour we've been taking? Let's keep going. It couldn't be easier to open a case. From the portal, it's right in the main navigation bar. From here, you can open up a new case, manage your existing cases. All you have to do is define an overview of your issue, select your product, specify the version, and right there, the search will suggest knowledge base articles that could possibly be the solution to your problem. If not, no big deal. We can just open a new case. From here, Upload your logs, you can specify the name of the host, that way you and the support agent are using the same verbiage, the same, same naming conventions to understand what's going on in your environment, add in your contact information, and any additional details that could help your support engineer resolve your problem more quickly. With all that information, create a case and track it right from the support console. Couldn't be easier. There's just one more thing here in the customer portal that I wanna point out to you, and that's the knowledge base. The knowledge base provides solutions, planning guides, and even tips for your Red Hat products. You can search for a keyword or you can browse through the top trending pages in the knowledge base. There's no way to oversell the value of having the customer portal, having our support teams, our consulting engagements. There's just so much that you get out of the customer portal of being a partner with Red Hat and with Red Hat Enterprise Linux. But support and subscriptions aren't the only reason why running RHEL is different from running CentOS Linux. In fact, one of the other major reasons for running Red Hat Enterprise Linux is the ecosystem of tools that come with it. Some tools are included right in your RHEL subscription, and others are nothing but an add-on away. In fact, one of my favorite tools that are included in RHEL is the Image Builder. Whether that's the command line, the web console, or through the managed service, the Image Builder tool is an easy way to start defining corporate level golden images that you can share between dev and ops teams, that you can deploy as a golden image, or my hope for the future is that you can get your build blueprints right from your software provider. So if you have a database provider or some third party application, my hope is one day Image Builder will be used to go out to their website purchase your subscription, and then instead of an ISO or an installer file or a 10-page PDF document explaining how to custom compile their application, instead, it'll just be a YAML image builder-based blueprint that'll allow you to build RHEL systems from scratch using their blueprint. So if you're, if you're an ISV or one of our software partners watching this, get in touch with me. I want to talk about this, this image builder blueprint import-export functionality. Even here in my home lab, in fact, I built all of my RHEL systems from a single golden image. All you have to do to get started is to install the composer packages and log into your system's web console. From here, I can create an image or export a blueprint. I can check on the status of my builds as well as define custom sources, Apple or Red Hat satellite repositories, for instance. For sake of example, let's walk through a build. I want to define a new blueprint. So from here, I can give my blueprint a name then on the next screen, I can define a list of packages each of my builds should come preloaded with. That can be custom tools that you use on a regular basis, things like Vim Enhanced, Tmux, Git, 
now I can really start to dig in and customize my image. I can add kernel parameters. I can define a custom file system layout. I can enable or disable services. I can create users and groups and a host of other configuration options. Once I've defined the image, I can review it, then define the image type I want to deploy to. This image could be a QCOW2 file for running on top of RHEL or OpenStack. It could be a cloud-based image like an Amazon AMI and a host of others. All I need to do is select the image to build, deploy it in a new system, and that's it. My system has all of that configuration ready to go. And in fact, if I've included something like an Ansible service account, I can use Ansible Automation Platform to then further customize and further automate my build systems. I mentioned the, the hybrid cloud console a few times, along with Red Hat Insights. Red Hat Insights is also included in your RHEL subscription, which means that if you're paying for RHEL, you already have access to Red Hat Insights. This isn't some high-level generic monitoring tool. No, this is a growing suite of services that can augment your operations team. Notice I said augment, not replace. No system can replace the intuition, the instinct, and the experience of a systems administrator or systems engineer. What if you could give your systems administration team and your security teams a bird's eye view of what CVEs are currently in the wild and whether or not they impact your environment? Think about being able to run pre-upgrade analysis on your RHEL 7 or RHEL 8 machines before running an in-place upgrade to the next major version. Think about being able to execute Ansible-based remediation right from a centralized console. This could be fixing CVE remediations. This could be adjusting advisor uh, notifications. This could be uh, working on configuration drift right from a centralized console. And these are just a few examples from the more than 20 services you can gain access to right from the hybrid cloud console. If you know me, I'm not much of a salesperson. I am genuinely excited about what Red Hat Insights is doing and completely blown away by the level of functionality that comes included with your Red Hat Enterprise Linux subscription. And these are just a few of the tools that are available as part of your RHEL subscription. But Red Hat isn't just the Linux company anymore. No, in fact, it offers an entire suite of tools ranging from infrastructure to middleware to management. And one of the most recognizable tools in our portfolio is Red Hat Satellite. This tool is essential for managing the lifecycle of your RHEL systems. You can download packages, create content views, schedule package updates for your fleet of systems, all of that. And Satellite can help you manage and maintain a disconnected infrastructure. To be able to re reproduce this as part of the CentOS Linux world would require a handful, if not more, disparate tools, each with their own management, each with their own release cadence, and none of that providing you a single pane of glass into your lifecycle management like Red Hat Satellite does. One of the other tools that I'm really excited to talk more about is Red Hat Ansible Automation Platform. Because once you get your RHEL fleet up and running and your package lifecycle figured out, now you can start automating away those mundane error-prone tasks. How many times do you create a user across all of your systems? How many times do you want a system service enabled or disabled? How many times do you need to change the uh, configuration of like your NTP servers? Why not automate that away? Why not write a few lines of YAML code in an Ansible playbook and let Ansible Automation Platform manage the rest? I was a Linux administrator for years. CentOS Linux, RHEL, among other distributions as well but none of them can replace the experience that you can have by running Red Hat Enterprise Linux. The professional support, the consulting, the analytics, the management tools, not to mention a vast partner ecosystem. You know, it, it really just makes me want to send a few RHEL subscriptions back in time to past Eric and let him see how his sysadmin experience could have been so much different. Spend less time on the mundane, get paged out fewer times over the weekend, and to spend more time on value-add activities like growing my skill set or taking that much-needed vacation. I hope that this comparison has proved helpful. If you're curious to learn more, you've come to the right place. You should hit that subscribe button and smash that bell. Our team produces content like this every single week. In fact, we have two shows right now on our YouTube channel that go live right here. The first is RHEL Presents. 
It's live every other Wednesday and looks at Red Hat Enterprise Linux as a product, but also day in the life questions of a systems administrator. And where's the industry going? What should we be focused on next? The second show is Into the Terminal and that's live around lunchtime every Friday. Into the Terminal helps you, forgive the pun, go deeper into the terminal. We cover essentials for Linux users of all kinds, from user and group creation to firewall management and much, much more. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like and leave us a comment. We're always open to new topics just like this, and your interaction helps us keep this content flowing. So on behalf of myself and the entire Red Hat Enterprise Linux team, we'll see you next time.